from the stars like no other can. Bailey builds guitars with the wind and the sun. Howdy doody folks, welcome to the workshop for guitar making channel. Um, my name's Mark Bailey, I'm going to show you today how to restring a guitar or how to string one up. Um, you probably think you already know how to do it, um, nothing wrong with a refresher though is there? Um, but you're probably doing it wrong. Like everybody else I've ever shown how to put guitars on, how to put strings on guitars, you're probably doing it wrong. Um, if not, then just watch this and uh, prove, you can prove me wrong. You can say I was doing it right all along, Mark. This is the first guitar that I ever made. It's an oiled finish. A bit ragged. But I love it. All the same. This is a guitar that we use every week down the bliss. Or well, we used to. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to show you very quickly how we restring a guitar. A few caveats. Um, this doesn't include, um, I'm not including this end of the guitar, uh, so electric guitar bridges are all different, you'll have to work out how it fits this end, usually it just fits through a hole similar to this. Um, so <clears throat> you'll have to work out how your strings fit into the bridge this end. In my case, obviously this is an acoustic and they fit in with um, these bridge pins here. Um, I'm going to put a set of 12s on my acoustic. This is the strings that I prefer. Although I am highly considering trying a different gauge of strings because of a video that I saw by a guy called Rick Beato. I've mentioned him before, but I pronounced his name wrong. <laughs> I pronounced it Rick Beato, so sorry about that. Um, Rick Beato made a great video about um, it's called you're using the wrong gauge strings and of course I thought no I'm not but I watched it anyway and um, his was specific to electric guitars and um, basically says that they use really really thin strings and um, I'll tell you a little story about that later on but I think um, yeah I'm gonna keep it short and sweet today but if you want something a bit longer and more interesting to watch 
more in depth, go and watch the Rick Beato video, but wait until we've finished doing this, eh? Because he doesn't show you how to restring a guitar. He just talks about different string gauges and he does concentrate on electric guitars. I'm not sure if it translates exactly the same to acoustic guitars, but, um, but I'm really considering testing it to find out. But I'm really conservative and um, unwilling to test anything new. So uh, I'm gonna stick with my my 12s and also as a, another caveat I wanted to say um, if you are considering changing your gauge of strings then you may run into other issues um, especially with a electric guitar with your trem setup or um, with any guitar with the with the setup of the truss rod so what I'm going to concentrate on today is just swapping like for like so we're, we're not changing gauge of strings, we're just using the same gauge that was on it before. And um, a quick way of working out um, what gauge of strings, if you're not sure, if you've got hold of a guitar, you're not entirely sure what gauge it is, it's actually really hard to measure. Um, I've got the digital calipers and everything. Um, but even so, the difference between like um, a set of 11s and a set of 12s, for instance, is just one thousandth of an inch. And anyone who can measure that accurately, um, frankly, is, is a better man than me. So, um, but what I have found is if you look at the knot of a string, you can actually tell the difference um, and you can compare the sizes by looking at the knots is the best way to do it. So that's what I've found. So there's like for like, set of 12s. But I'll just show you an 11s and you should be able to see um, the difference. It might not show up so well on camera, but with a bit of look, you can see the one nearest is a 12. Back a bit. The one furthest away mm -hmm. is an 11. Um, you might have to just take my word for it, but if you look closely at the knot, that's the easiest place to check the size um, if you're not sure. So I'm just going to whip these old ones off. Um, you'll probably have heard people say you shouldn't take all your strings off at once. And um, yeah, I agree with that. Um, it's best really if you take one off at a time and replace them one at a time. And that's because when you take them all off, it can affect the truss rod. So um, it's best if you can do them one at a time. But I'll tell you now, if you take your guitar into a guitar repairer, to get it serviced first thing you'll do is probably take all the strings off and give it a good clean and then put it all back together again um, all things being good it should go back together okay but it is worth just checking the truss rod if you do that <clears throat> we'll talk a little bit about the truss rod in a minute but I'm not going to go into it at too much of full depth um, so let's just uh, let's just whip these strings off And if you've got any questions about strings, now's the time to whack them in the comments, guys. So I want you to notice how easy these strings come off as well. When you use my stringing method, um, it makes it a lot easier. Stringing and unstringing is very fast. It doesn't take that long. And you shouldn't injure yourself either. Um, it is worth wearing goggles when you're doing this, believe it or not. If you're doing this um, for a living, especially, if you do this kind of thing for a living, then um, strings, you don't want a string jabbing you in the eye. So uh, it is worth putting some goggles on. Got a comment? That's right, so there's my strings off. Um, what I'd like to do is to just put one string on and then we'll do some comments, all right? This is just, I want to do it fairly quick for the people who don't want to waste any time and they just want to come see how it's done and then knob off. So for you guys, uh, here's the rhyme to remember. So it's, um, you put your string through the hole, you go round the back toward the middle, underneath and over. Round the back toward the middle, underneath and over. <laughs> yes, uh, I need some chords for that, don't I? Round the back, toward the middle, underneath and over. 
my favourite song. So I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. As soon as I've I've confused myself now and lost my string. Right, that's an old one. Carol, I need you need to get me a string. I think. Oh no, I found it. Got it. Right, um what I like to do is all these holes, I like to align the holes so that they're diagonal. So that's the first thing I do. Align the holes so that they're diagonal. So they're going to go this way. Now I'm going to show you on this side. So if you've got six in line headstock, you just repeat this six times. If you've got a three aside headstock like this one, then you just need to do the exact opposite on the other three. I will show you that, but I'm going to show you this side first. So um, at this end, I need to just put a pin in. And if you are stringing an acoustic, the way to do this, put your string in, press your pin in, and then you lift your string as you push the pin and it pulls that ball end right tight up against the um, bridge plate there. Tight up against the bridge plate which is what you want. Okay so this is the business end I want to show you. So um, I'm line, lined up my holes so that it's diagonal look. and I'm going to go straight through the hole and I pull it until I've got a couple of fingers of slack. So um, it depends on how fat your fingers are obviously. You'll get used to this but um, in my case I want a couple of fingers. The, in the important thing is we want about one, and a one to two winds on this post. So one and a half to two winds ideally. You don't want hundreds of winds because that will affect the tune and stability um, especially if you've got a tram if you imagine when you drop the tram then your strings go baggy strings go loose if you've got hundreds of winds around here your strings go loose and then when you drop your tram and it when you let go of your tram and it comes back up the strings go tight but they might catch on the um, coils so your string will come up sharp you may have noticed that on a guitar and if so that's why you only want one and a half to two winds on your post and that's why um, well I always recommend if you're making a guitar with um, um, with a trem then I always recommend that you use lock-in tuners so lock-in tuners are great for um, guitars with trems because um, it reduces the number of winds around the post also makes stringing up faster. So I'm going to show you now exactly how we do the knot. It's not really a knot but the string just clamps down on itself. So straight through the hole and then it goes round the back toward the middle underneath and over. Over like that. So if you look in real close, you can see the string actually clamps down on itself as we tighten it up. And I've got a way of holding my um, finger and then second finger and thumb. Uh, what am I talking about? Second finger. Okay. Let's just wind that one out a bit. So first finger on top of the string, second finger, oh, you can't really see it can you? Um, yeah, so second finger's through. pulling up on the string, there you go. And so all I'm doing is I'm pressing the string down so each wind goes below the previous wind, okay? Each string needs to go below the previous wind. And then my second finger is just holding some tension on the string. So it takes a bit of practice, especially when I'm holding it at that angle for the camera and I'm hoping for one to two winds so there we go there's one and a half winds and I've got a note coming out already there we go lovely 
And then as, as you can see, the, uh, the string's clamping down on itself there. So I'm just going to repeat that twice more at normal speed while Carol just flicks between the cameras and uh, gets the best angle for us. And then we'll have a little... Um, I'll answer some questions before I do the other side. So I'm going to put my whole diagonal and I'm going to go straight through, round the back, toward the middle, underneath and over. Press down, pull up, put some tension on, wind the string. And you can use a string winder for this. I tend to not bother to be honest. We'll put this one on and then we'll do a few questions. So if you're new here, by the way, and uh, you found any of this interesting or useful, then make sure to subscribe and like, do all the YouTube stuff and all that kind of stuff, you know, it all helps us um, and we appreciate it. Um, you can, if you go to the website, guitarmaking.co.uk, you can become a supporter or you can become a premium member. And premium members get access to all our courses. So what you're seeing here today is a rough and ready live version. Um, when we do this on the course, it's all edited and I cut out all my ums and ahs and all the rubbish that I talk in between and you only get pure guitar making action. So if you want to um, get on the courses, um, that's a complete design and build from start to finish starting with a blank piece of paper all the way through until you're putting your strings on and setting up your guitar um, you can make pretty much anything you want but i recommend you start with something pretty basic like this or um pretty standard acoustic um yeah if you want to know more about that head to the website guitarmaking.co.uk to get on the full courses you need to become a premium member but it's you guys it's you premium members that are keeping us going and enabling us to make all these videos. So thank you very much guys. Um, so we'll do the other half. Um, I'll show you that in a second. But first we'll do a, a couple of questions, shall we? Right, okay. Questions. So we'll, we'll go right back. Uh, right back to the very first thing. So um, uh, uh, Bad Press asked, how deep is your love? Well he asked that, no. He said, how deep, how many deep is your fingers? recommended the fingers thing right? well i use two fingers right. and um but you might have to vary that it depends on the number of winds around the post so you might tr uh, through a uh, a process of trial and error you'll work out what's best for you um it'll be two or three fingers depending on how fat your fingers are okay and, and then, so then eddie cameron said uh, have you got a, a template um have you got um or, or do you sell uh, copies of your fingers <laughs> Uh, in the shop, and there's Don't a give couple me of ideas. suggestions like, like someone asked, Did Stu, does Stu Mack not make That's them? That's not my finger. Does Stu Mack not make them? <laughs> been a few like that. They are, they're a yeah. bit... I a did bit, try putting it up, but... They're a bit cheeky um, today. Tem so TV templates... It got maybe. misused. <laughs> oh, I've gone ahead and put this string on by accident. Okay, well wait, right, so, um, uh, uh, another question. R&R, Rock and Roll 912. No, no, you have to answer the question. Go on, I'm answering questions. I'm just getting this end ready. We need your face, though. Go so, on, then. Um, he's, he's um, been asked to reach in the strat um, with, a, with a custom, it sounds like a custom set of strings with a really skinny top yeah. and a really heavy bottom. And he said, would that not pull the neck out? Will it pull the neck out eventually? You know, will it, is, is it a problem? It's not ideal. Um... Uh, it's a very good point. Um, these string gauges are all worked out <laughs> by engineers. And you know what engineers are like? Um, well, thankfully they're, they're, a, they're a boring, nerdy bunch because our life depends on them a lot, doesn't it? But, um, but when it comes to guitar strings, mine's far superior to mine. I've worked out the, the correct gauges of strings and it all comes down to um, I suppose from a playing point of view is feel 
and tone. <clears throat> so, um, stop, stop stringing them. I'm not stringing them, I'm just putting them in this end. So yeah, what am I talking about? Well, we've still got questions. What's the, what's the question I'm answering now? That was about the heavy top. Uh, yeah, heavy top. No, Mine's heavy far board. superior to ours have worked these things out. But then, then guitar players come along and we all want to try something different, don't we? We all think we know better. <laughs> Everyone thinks they know better. So um, I'm sure there is a case for light top, heavy bottom. Um, but I, I don't know what it is. You'll have to ask your pal. Now, having said that, if that is what um, your client wants, then you have to you have to agree with him, don't you? And you have to you have to um, you have to do it. And there probably is a very good reason for it. It's just I don't do it myself. Um, so yeah, if you do know the reason for light top heavy bottom, let us know in the comments, folks. It's probably just to make the top easier to bend whilst retaining the bass frequencies of the bass strings. Um, will it affect the neck? Well, yes. Um, having a lighter top and a heavier bottom. Guitar strings are already thinner at the top end and fatter at the bottom, so they already have a twisting motion on the neck and you're increasing that. So it's not ideal. Um, and like I say, these things were all calculated to the nth degree by engineers. And then guitar players come and stuff it all up. That's basically what I was trying to get um, my point. Um, you probably, f most people would probably have more joy just with the standard set. Um, but having said that, try it and find out. Um, your opinion may vary. Next question. Okay, so, um, well, um, uh, the importance of getting it right has been discussed a bit because uh, TV101 apparently regularly stabs themselves in the finger, right? Um, but he wonders if he's cutting them too short, right? But the other thing... Yeah, leave them a bit longer. If it really hurts when you stab them, then you've cut them too short. Um, leave about a quarter of an... Yeah, about three sixteenths of an inch to quarter of an inch. I used to cut them really short. Um, some people will actually nip them off really, as sharp, sharp, as close to the post as you can possibly get. But you run the risk of it popping through if you do that. So nowadays, um, it took me years to finally come to this conclusion. You're better off leaving about a quarter of an inch. And then it's not so painful if you jab yourself and um, there's no risk of it popping through. So that's, that's the, the that's conclusion I've come to for all these years of restringing my guitar and jabbing myself plenty of times as well. So leave them a little bit longer, maybe up to quarter of an inch, and then it doesn't hurt so much. Uh, it won't dig into your finger, it'll just bounce off your finger. So it, it gets, when you cut them off really short, they get really strong and sharp, and that's when you'll cut yourself. So leave them a bit longer. And uh, the effects of this, getting it wrong, are terrible, because bag press, he missed the Rolling Stones in 1990 uh, because Keith had jabbed his finger and it was infected. So that's how bad it can be. Can't believe he wasn't he was changing his own strings. What was he doing? He's only got five and all. Right, so then... Did you guys know that? Right, I think that's true. Back, back to the real world. Uh, EP, Keith Richards has only got five strings on his guitar. EP says, why do you choose elixirs? What is it? You, you mentioned this before. Okay, choice of strings. Um, well, because I'm a guitar maker, Elixirs are a no-brainer. I can put elixirs on a guitar, put it in a case, and forget about it. Um, that's me. Ten months later, if we get that guitar out, it will play as if those strings are new. Because elixirs have this coating on which prevents them from rusting. Um, actually, I was given my first set of elixirs by, um, by a rep. When they very first came out, they were given sets away for free. They only ever did it once. Um, ever since then, we've had to pay top dollar for them. But um, I've realized it's worth it because nine months after I put them on, I was still playing this guitar with the same strings on. And I've played it daily. And I thought, blimey, these are the same strings that that guy gave me nine months ago. 
and I'd played like a, a an hour a day for every day for nine for a year, nine months. So I thought, well, there's got to be something in that. And they still sounded all right, and they were fine. So um, yeah, since then I've put elixirs on all my instruments. Um, I do occasionally meet a guitar with some nice Martin strings on or some nice bronze strings and they do sound really lovely but I think the elixirs overtake them within about a week so brand new bronze strings uh, or phosphor bronze strings brand new standard strings will sound um, bigger and nicer than elixirs but only for a week or so so if you're changing your strings every week you don't really need to use elixirs but if like me you like to get the most bang for your buck and make your strings last as long as possible nothing compares to elixirs and all the people that have tried to copy um, none of them are as good um, I've tried I've tried them all, all the different brands and I always end up coming back to elixirs so do we have any more questions before I do the last half? Well, can we, just on that, there are some, but we'll wait till after you've done. Rock and Roller says he's never he's never seen um, elixirs in his shops, and I just want to say that... They are expensive, and that's why a lot of shops won't take them. They don't, they, they, they treat every, every customer the same, whether you buy huge amounts or small amounts, and the margins are quite low, and shops make a lot more money out of uh, other strings. So... Yeah, so I'm sure you all heard that. That's the reason why you won't see them in all shops. Um, right, so so let's do the other half. So if, you're, yeah. if you've got a left-handed guitar or um, a 3-3 three, three, like this acoustic, then you'll need to do the tuners on the bottom. Now, weirdly, these are called, um, these are called um, if you've got six in line, they're called 6L. And you want... Um, 6 L, which would be 6 left and then if you had a right a left handed guitar these ones are the R's so you would want 6 R so this is 3 L, 3 R or 3 3 if you want a set of left handed tuners you want 6 L and if you want a set of left handed tuners you want 6 R how confusing is that? <laughs> Why is everything so confusing? It's always like that, isn't it? Everything, everything's always like that. Anyway, so if you've got a left-handed guitar, then you've got your three R, six R tuners here, or your three R tuners if, you're, if you've got a three three set. So it's exactly the same, straight through the hole, except for that it's the opposite. But it's still round the back toward the middle underneath and over easy peasy we'll put some tension on right I'm going to show you another little trick there's a little treat for you guys who've stuck around if you're going to use a string winder quite often you find that the string winder will, will hit will contact the wood here and it damages the wood so one little trick is to get yourself a bit of sponge and cut a bit out you can put a bit of sponge down into the thing and then your string winder won't go on so far and it protects it from hitting the side of the um, headstock there. So a bit of tension on the string, normal speed, straight through the hole. I always like to have it diagonal. So straight through the hole, a bit of slack, round the back toward the middle, underneath and over. Last one. Round the back towards the middle, underneath and over. Have you got it yet?
little bit of tension on, tune it really quickly. Right, just check this out guys. Now, I've had people return guitars to me and say um, it won't stay in tune. So, um, there was nothing wrong with the guitar. All it was was that the strings were stretching. So this is something you might have noticed. I'm sure you veterans know all about this. But um, your strings need stretching. So when you put a new set of strings on, uh, Watch what happens. If I... If I... I'm playing the two E's there. Now if I stretch this string, what I do is I lift it and I make sure that it lifts out of the saddle here and also make sure that it lifts out of the saddle uh, at this end as well. So I'm gonna stretch this E string to show you what I mean. Lift it, lift it out of the saddle, and I keep the tension on all the way down. Lift it out of the nut, and then all the way back down again. Now listen to what's happened to this string. It's gone flat. Original note, new note. I'll retune it. See, that was a semitone. Um, so what I do is I do that two or three times to each string, and that stabilizes the string. So that's, that's basically called stretching the string. Um, and it's really important that you do that. If you restring your guitar, you've got to stretch your strings, okay? And then your guitar will stay in tune um, a million times better than if you didn't. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. Now I will occasionally snap a string when I'm doing this. It's usually when I'm demonstrating how to do it. <laughs> so don't be surprised if I snap a string. Um, I'm just going to give them all a good tug, retune it. Yeah, Clay Hart says he finds he has to stretch them uh, three times and then they stay in tune after that. Yeah, I can uh, three times. That's what I think. So, just do it quickly like this. You can really go to town if you want. Give me a old stretch. Can I ask you a couple of things? Three times is, is plenty. Um, some people just do it twice and find it. So it takes me three times usually. Go on in. questions? Well, EP said that he has uh, an old acoustic that when he's restrung it um, and it's all in tune, after a while it goes sharp. And he asked that a while ago, so um, he said, do you have any suggestions? So if, do you think there's something other than string stretching going on there that goes sharp? Sometimes when you're, when you're doing this stretching the string business, Sometimes it's not that you're overdoing it, but but you can end up with it tuning sharp. And so what I would just do is just um, just retune it, and it will probably settle. You'll probably find it's just um, when, when you when you are stretching the strings, it is easy to just end up just sharp. Um, it could be just that. Take it. Take it um, below the note and back up again 
Um, another good tune-in, I mean this isn't a video on tune-in by the way, it was about putting strings on which we've done so those people who wanted to know that they've already gone. <laughs> so yeah we can carry on and relax now but um, so I wasn't going to talk about tune-in today but um, I guess while we're on the subject you should really always tune up to the note rather than tuning down to the note. So if your string is sharp take it down and back up. Now that's to do with the way the gears work in the tuners. Um, it's the best way to take up the slack of the gears. So um, yeah, always tune below the note and then back up again. Okay, fantastic. So that's really what I wanted to show you about stringing today. Um, but I've got three important nuggets of news for you. Well, we haven't finished yet. Um, so don't don't go away. We've got three nuggets for you. Uh, well, first of all, I just want to apologise to anyone who's ordered anything and it hasn't arrived. Um, uh, we've been extremely busy and it's been chaos. So, uh, I know that we have caught up again and everything is on its way to you. So, if you if you have um, ordered something and you haven't had it yet, then apologies for that. But um, thanks for your patience. You know, things are a bit crazy at the moment. It's not just us either. The post office have all gone crazy as well. So, um yeah so appreciate your um patience on that and uh we're trying our hardest we've managed to catch up with everything again so yeah we've got a question go on oh, keep, keep go on questions so, um, go on questions carol or i'll start talking again and then you'll start shaking your fist at me again okay well the other thing is um on wednesday i was supposed to tell you that we were getting a, the new host for the website. So guitarmaking.co.uk <laughs> got a new, we got a new host, super fast broadband. Um, our own dedicated host. So it's, I tested it um, and it's like a million times faster. It's amazing. So um, hopefully you guys have noticed as well the massive improvement. But what I should have told you is to expect some glitches. <laughs> So the site actually went down for a few hours on Wednesday. Um, it's all back up now. And then we lost all the images. All the images disappeared. Um, so it was absolute chaos. Um, I guess all to be expected when you're dealing with uh, changing host on the internet. Um, so chaos ensued. Several sleepless nights for everyone involved. But, um, but it, I hope it was worth it. <laughs> You guys will have to let me know personally for me because I work on the website and I'm always going through all the different pages and um, having to wait for it to reload every time was starting to get slower and slower and slower. Partly because we're victims of our own success with it being so busy recently. Um, the busier it gets, the slower it gets. So um, yeah, new host, super fast. Um, it's faster than me now, so that's good. And uh, we're still working on the still more improvements to come. Um, so yes, that's two of me nuggets covered. Go on, Carol. Right, well, uh, Roll shoots and over in New Zealand says he's just restrung. Is an acoustic using your method, and it's it seems to be sending to a tree. Blimey, that was quick. And um, um, <laughs> you've done it already. Deej. It's pretty faster than me. But Deej said that he. Um, He's already used your method of string winds and all of that and the stretching and uh, he's, he's staying in tune. He's used it on two guitars and that's the staying in tune, a treat. Fantastic, said. yes. Um, right. Uh, well, as I have showed this method to um, everybody that I've met, basically. <laughs> yeah, leave me alone with someone for five minutes and I'll show them how to restring their guitar. Um, I even showed... Martin Taylor how to do this once oh, um, that's on the, he was being on YouTube. he was being in interviewed by Elixir Strings and uh, they wanted him to show how to put strings on and he does it wrong <laughs> so they asked me to come in or Martin asked me to come in I was very grateful um, to be asked and I did put a link in the description of this video if you want to go and see <laughs> what I look like with a severe hangover 
because it was filmed at a show and I'd, I'd been up all night drinking <laughs> as you do at these things you know so then I was dragged into the to do some filming which I was not expecting a ridiculous hour in the morning so yeah if you're wondering why I look like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards even more than normal it's because I was severely hung over at the time <laughs> And Martin still strings his guitars wrong anyway, so. Um, well, I've met a few people that keep that video on their on their phone. Yeah, but it is a so good that, video. So that they can use it when they're gigging. Yeah. I've known a few people that do that. Right. Okay, so um, you've had. Another... So yeah, enjoy that, and I also put the link to the the Rick Beato video that as well for you. Okay, comment. Um, Ian Jackson says that he's heard that there's a thing called Graphon, um, which he's wondering whether they might use that in. Sounds strings. like. In strings. Graphene. Well, maybe. You mean graphene? One day, maybe. Don't know. Okay. Wait for your graphene strings to come out. And. So you can um, play faster. There was. Oh, yeah. So Grey Heart has noticed that your guitar looks like it might need a bit of a fret job. <laughs> bit of TLC. And I said, and I said Do you've seen the rest oh, of Oh, no. It? That's a subject for another video, isn't it? Well done. When does your guitar need a fret job? Um. <laughs> When does it need a fret job? Yeah, you've noticed some fret wear on my guitar. What? The internet's got eagle eyes. Nothing gets past the internet, does it? So oh. th there is quite a lot of wear on there, but do you know what? It still plays fine. So when do you need to refret your guitar? The simple answer to that is when it becomes a problem. And at the moment, it's not a problem. Um, I might even get away with just recrowning, reshaping those frets, give them a polish, good as new. Um, but they might just need um, leveling and recrowning. Uh, but there's no point working on them just because they look like they need it. It has to actually cause a problem when you're playing. So don't go by appearance, go by um, somebody will come to you and say, look, my guitar's buzzing. You'll see the fret where, where and you'll know why. Why is your guitar in such a state? Because I'm such a hard working player. <laughs> Truthfully, this guitar, this was actually my first guitar or second. Kind of made two at the same time. So my first and second guitar are both my first and second guitar, if you see what I mean. But this is really my first guitar and um, it's got an oiled finish because I couldn't wait to play it. So I couldn't be bothered waiting for a lacquered finish to dry. So I just did a wipe on finish. Um, so it's not the most hard wearing of finish. And then also it's been played for at least three hours every week um, at our uh, live acoustic bliss night for the past 10 years. 15. 15 years. <laughs> so that's why it looked a bit beaten up. It's been played by just about every guitar player in air um, on a regular basis down at the Twa Dogs on our live um, open mic night. Um, yeah, if you're interested in that sort of thing, we do do a live stream from that, by the way. Acoustic Bliss, you'll find that on YouTube. But that's us letting our hair down, so don't take it too seriously. Uh, Mark, Eddie Cameron says, what's your opinion of locking tuners? As I said earlier, I would highly recommend locking tuners if you're um, making a guitar with a trem, then I actually recommend them. If your guitar does not have a trem, you don't need them. They're unnecessary and they add extra weight that you don't need. As you've seen with my method, it's actually called the locking method of putting strings on. They call it the string locking method. Um, they said the elixir guys said Mark can you come and demonstrate your string locking method so um, you don't need string locks the reason you might want them is because it does make changing strings faster so if that's something that you might um, that might bother you if you you know if you don't like changing strings if if you get fed up with how long it takes um, Locking tuners can speed things up. So that's one of the reasons some of our players have used them. But 
on an acoustic or any guitar without a trem, then I, I don't recommend them. Should have quit while I was ahead, shouldn't I? Um, Deej, at the beginning of the stream, noticed that your guitar was hand signed, and he. Yeah, well, that again, that's because uh, that's because I couldn't wait to play it, could I? It was my first guitar, like I say. And Grey Heart says it sounds wonderful. Thank you, Grey Heart. It sounds better when other people play it. I have to say. I've got another question. Um. So I'm just going to snip these strings off and show you how I always bend them down. You don't want them sticking up like, like that. So bend them down and then snip them off not too short. I used to snip them off a lot shorter than that. But um, as Tony was saying or Deej was saying earlier, whoever it was, um, yeah, if you cut them off too short, they become really painful if you jab. But if you cut them off about this length, then they don't jab you. So I'm going to cut them off about a quarter of an inch. Not too short. Making sure they're all bent down out of the way. So, um, I was taught how to do this when I worked in a guitar factory. The guitar factory that shall not be named. Um, and so... I was taught that this is the way to put strings on. There is no other way. If you're doing it another way, you're doing it wrong. And so, um, for, nobody's ever shown me a better way. And so, I'm passing it on to you guys. This is the definitive way to restring your guitar. Um, if you're out there, and you know a better way then please let us know in the description and in the comments leave a comment or head over to the forum and um, yeah tell us all how it's done because uh, I don't know a better way nobody's ever shown me a better way so until that happens this is the way to do it folks we've got a couple of last questions before we wrap it up yes yeah, so there's two subjects here yeah like the first one there's been a bit of discussion about sticky nuts which I, my brain completely blanked out, right? But Eddie Cameron's come back and said, did you talk about uh, any kind of lubrica lubrication when restringing? So can you talk a bit about sticky knots, please, without any more puns? <laughs> there were too many. I'm not even going to read them out. Yeah, if you want the puns, just look in the, yeah. the live chat replay. Um, sticky nuts, another great reason to use elixirs. Uh, the coating on the strings is, is a lubricant and so they don't stick in the nuts um, one thing you can try obviously the uh, the old wives tale is to use a, a pencil pencil shavings contains graphite and um, so you can uh, if you lift your string out of the nut and put some pencil shavings in there and put your string back down on top of that that's gonna help you can buy dry lubricant graphite powder um, I've got some somewhere um, that can help as well and also string cleaner that you buy on a oh, small packet. if you keep your strings clean keep your strings clean you can get a string cleaner um, that can help as well because well it's usually like when your string gets tarnished and it starts to get a bit rough that's more when it's more likely to stick in the nut um, so yeah bit of um, the old wives tale a bit of pencil dust in there won't do any harm you can actually buy posh graphite dry lubricant um, to put in there um, elixir strings have got a lubricant coating which is fantastic um, and also you, you might want to consider if it's a problem 
um, replacing the nut with something more suitable. You can buy um, roller nuts, like with a roller, an actual roller bearing. That might be one solution. A bit uh, drastic, not not what you'd want to put on your vintage guitar. Um, but also you can get. Um, we use these nuts, which are called Graph Tech, and it has it's I call it posh plastic. Um, it's got graphite impregnated into the plastic and so um, the string slides a lot smoother on it. Um, I'll show you one if I can. Graph tech nut. So if I'm making an acoustic guitar I don't use bone because Carol's a vegetarian <laughs> and it stinks. It's really nasty to work with. I don't want to get anthrax. Um, and bone is inconsistent. Everybody raves about bone. Oh, you've got to have a bone nut. You haven't. Um, bone, bone's good. It can be good. It can be fantastic. Um, but it's inconsistent. One piece of bone is different to another piece. So this is Gratech. You can hear the quality of these nuts, can't you? Um, they ring. Uh, and th this is your Gratech, which is black and slippy. And if I'm making an acoustic guitar, then I use Tusk. It's made by the same company. This is imitation ivory. So it's made, formulated to sound like ivory, um, but it's made from posh plastic. So no creatures were harmed, which is more important. How do you feel about brass, Mark? I ate it. <laughs> Ask any guitar maker what they think about brass Why? nuts. Why? Because it's about 10 times harder work than any of them. And, um, no massive advantage um so nut material people would it was a f i think it's like a bit of an 80s fad again um it came i think it's the fad before scalloped frets scalloped fretboards it was the fad just before scalloped fretboards um i think the theory is if your nut material is is metal it's going to give you a longer sustain um, and it's going to last longer but in practice they tend to bind a lot worse than any other nut and um, that's the main reason why I don't like them um, one f argument that I've heard is that it makes it sound makes the open strings sound the same as the frets because it's metal but it doesn't really um, if you want your open strings to sound exactly the same as the frets, use a zero fret. So yeah, brass nuts are okay, they look nice, but they do get tarnished. You know, if you leave a fingerprint on, brass tarnish is really easy. So most brass nuts, are, they lose their shine really quick. And they go tarnished. I don't think guitar makers like them very much. Um, I'm not keen myself. So again, that's completely up to you. If you're making a guitar, it's completely up to you and the only way you're really going to know is if you make one and find out well um just the, there's, there's one more big subject you need to tackle just before that james perry says can you get on with it because he's got a he's got a net to carve sorry with james his, with Come his on. new nuts right and with his new knife right his new guitar maker's tool that brilliant around. cheers um, james but he said that he swapped out the bone nut on his martin for a tusk nut and yeah. he, he said it made a fantastic difference well there you go um, so you're not the only one so who's had that experience. Um, cool, go on, Carol. Right, last thing is uh, James Bissett and Ian Jackson said, um, what can you recommend about stringing a bass? Stringing a bass, well, it's really a, another video, isn't it? Shall it? Will it be? Will we do that then? Yeah, we'll do another video. I'll tell you how I do it, right? But to actually demonstrate, I'll have to do another video on that. Let me show you how... Let me uh, just talk you through what I do. So this end would be the same. 
Um, it depends on the bridge that you've got, obviously. You need to secure your string at this end, depending on whatever bridge you've got. Down at this end, what I do is, um, I would pull my string taut and then four inches past, or I use the length of my hand uh, like this, the length of my hand, and that's where I'd cut the string. So for this post here, I would pull my string. And you know they've normally got a big slot and a hole down the end. So what I do is about four inches or about the length of my the hand there, I would cut it. And then I put the end of the string down the hole and then just wind it on the post, making sure each wind goes below the previous post. Hopefully that made some kind of sense. Um, you want extra winds on a base because usually you need the winds to pull the string down enough to give you enough angle over the nut. It depends on your guitar or bass, I should say. So hopefully that's answered most of the questions. Um, thank you so much guys for your patience. If you've ordered anything, um, um, it's on the way and uh, yeah we appreciate you supporting us because otherwise we'd be out on the streets and we're almost we're almost at our target to get a bag of lentils for Carol and uh, a whole pair of socks for me so someone was wondering if the socks were to strain the lentils with and uh, Never. <laughs> Never! No, we wouldn't waste the water. Oh my god, that would be... What a waste of water that would be. <laughs> no, Carol uses a tight... Oh, don't! I, Obviously. I don't wear tights, what are you like? Right. So what? what's the plan then? What's coming so up? That's it, what's coming up? Oh, right. Okay, guys, right. We're working on the website, trying to make it faster and better and sleeker. And also adding more stuff to it. Um, I've got some fairly bigger stuff planned. No, these live streams, although we make it look <laughs> although we make it look so easy, believe me, it's quite hard work. Um, I really didn't want to do it today, to be honest with you. But um, I thought we'll do we'll do a nice easy one. Like Strings. Thank you, Peter. He sent us some Swiss money. Oh, cheers, Peter. Swiss money. Um, I really didn't want to do it today, to be honest with you, but I could see all you guys on the forum talking about playing conkers at playtime. <laughs> and I couldn't let you down, could I? So, um, yeah. So we made extra effort today to, to make it on. Because really, we know that you just all want to have a laugh in the comments, really. Um, hopefully there was something useful and everybody picked up a little something out of that anyway um, yeah like and share and subscribe and all that but um, uh, there is some big stuff planned um, so I want to pre-warn you guys that um, we might miss the odd stream it might go quiet for a week or even two weeks whilst we put some of our, our bigger stuff together um, so I've got I've got some slightly bigger stuff planned that can't be done in just one session um, and so it needs a bit of planning is it stop moving you keep the mic keeps cutting out sorry guys um we have got some bigger stuff planned uh and it's going to take a bit of planning and also i want to also have it all laid out some kind of schedule or timetable so that you guys can all see what's coming as well so keep us all on track. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to be working on. So if it does go quiet for a week or two, don't think that we've got the coof or anything like that. Um, we'll keep you fully informed on the forum. So if you if you want to know what's going on on a day by day basis, then head over to the forum, guitarmaking.co.uk, and uh, it will all be made clear to you there what's going on. All right. Yeah, rock and roll. And nine one two says, "I think you need a holiday." 
Yeah, we've been doing it twice a week now for five months. Well, it's coming up six, isn't it? Coming up to six months. So, well, I really enjoyed it, I've got to say. Um, I don't want to stop doing it. It's just that, um, well, first of all, we did that live build where I built a guitar completely from scratch live. And then I wanted to show you all the basic guitar making techniques. So we've put together um, the playlist for the live build and the playlist for guitar making tech, I've called it, guitar making techniques. Guitar making tools and techniques, I've called it, playlist. And so I've covered all the basics now. Um, um, we're certainly not short of subjects to cover. Um, but if you've got any ideas of stuff you want me to cover, then head over to the forum and what would you like to see next? There's a post called what would you like to see next? And you can add your suggestion to the list or just whack it anywhere you like, we'll get it. Um, all suggestions welcome. Um, I'm always up for ideas of what you guys want to see. And you know, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you build guitars. So uh, yeah, if you're stuck, whatever it is, then head over to the forum ask a question I'll be there or somebody will be there to help you out if you want to get on the full courses the complete step-by-step -step guides build your own guitar start to finish you will need to become a premium member on the site and that is what actually um, keeps Carol in lentils and me in socks so thank you again guys especially if you've made it right till the very end was there anything we've forgotten Anything we've forgotten to say? <laughs> I don't think so. Brilliant. Okay, you know the most important thing though, don't you folks? Most important thing is round the back, toward the middle, underneath and over. And check twice, cut once.